amen and amen. amen. What a wonderful rendition, huh? Amen. I tell you, boy, we, we have been blessed by sanctified musicians, amen? amen? And it's good that we still have sane music in this insane world. We thank God for that wonderful rendition. Truly, uh, music in sermon. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And we want to say a happy Sabbath, especially to our online viewers. Happy Sabbath to Sister Carmen. I spoke to her, and she is recovering, um, and she's doing well. And so we pray that the good Lord will bring her back to speedily health. Amen. Amen. And to our online viewers, we say happy Sabbath, and we hope as you've logged on, you'll be blessed by this morning's service. Also, you can go ahead now and do your missionary activity. Copy this link, we pray, and do submit it and send it to your friends so they can be blessed by this morning's study. Also, we have a few announcements. Um, we do have a baptism schedule. Um, I'm just trying to confirm the location. We, we, we usually use Sister Inez's home, but I just want to get the date um, nailed down. Um, but if you'd like to be a part of that, 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 that baptism, you do want to see, see our, our, our clerk, and we will definitely make the preparations needful. We'll be announcing the date as soon as I get it down, but we do have some requests, and we'd like to honor them. Um, and baptism is a powerful thing, amen? amen. Um, and we want to honor that request. Also, um, we do have binders for the 1844 series. Um, when this series is over, you'd have had over probably 35 lessons. Thank you. Over 35 lessons you'd have had. And that's a lot of papers just to have laying around, amen? So, um, and I believe that it will probably be one of the most extensive work done, research done on the feast days. Um, so it's something worthy to have in your possession and to have your lessons so you can always reflect. And you'll never know where providence will blow. You'll never know, brothers and sisters. And you may have to resort to them yeah, as a mode of instruction, amen? So invest in one of the binders, see Sister Lawrence, invest in one of them, and we'll get them available, and they do have the sheet protectors in them, so you are able to um, secure your lessons and keep them in a, in a positive place, all right? Also, we want to also say this. Okay, all right, Ella, come on up, Ella. Okay, he, he needs a lesson. Ah, uh, yeah, all right. All right, Ella, no problem. Anytime, Ella, anytime, right? He can disrupt us anytime, all right? <laughs> he has that. All right, all right. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Amen. All right, also, you know, friends, we are here not just by curiosity. Um, the city of Wellington has over 60,000 people. And there's no Adventist presence in this area apart from us. Amen. They have many other congregations. And so we, we are in what is called, this is like a dark county initiative. Um, this is what you call virgin territory, for lack of word. And so we're the first here. And we're here not just to come and hear good sermons. We're here for evangelism, amen? And we started a wonderful initiative, and COVID came and shut us down. But I say this. If you'd like to be a part of us officially, come join us. Um, we have a massive outreach that, that is... Um, uh, in 4th of July, uh, what we do, we go on Wellington's calendar, and as, th as they have their events, we do try to be there, amen? And so the 4th of July, we're going to have our, um, the, the massive um, parade that they have. We were at last year, for those who were there, who, uh, two years ago. Let me see all those who were there. Remember the book we gave out? What was the book? We, not a, we gave out... Um, Hacksaw Ridge, De the story of Desmond Dawes, right? Yeah. A wonderful book we gave out. And so this year we're planning to give out some great controversy. But we have to have our booth because it's a lot of people there. Over hundreds, hundreds of people are there. Vendors, everybody's there. Insurance, you fit, you name it, right? So we plan to be there. And we look for initiatives like these to sow seeds, amen? Now, it is true that we may not see the fruits of our labor now. But we believe that the word will not return void, amen? amen? And that most of these seeds that we're planting will germinate during the loud cry, amen? amen. Do you believe in the loud cry? Amen. You look forward to the loud cry? Amen. If you're not a part of the loud cry and you're alive, as I have you, is lost, amen? 
So we want to be in that massive evangelism, right? So if, you wanna, if you're looking for a church that is not just, you know, about business, consider prayerfully being a part of us. You have gifts, you have talents, you have skills. We want to put them to use here, amen? I know, some, I know the benches may be hard, but our, arms are, our hearts are warm, amen? And ere long, we are, we are definitely exploring, you know, a congregation, amen? So we'll keep that in prayer as we, as we go forward, right? So just keep those things in prayer, and um, we hope you'll be a part of us officially, and hope you get your, your, your binders so you can keep these lessons and not have them all over the place, amen? All right, now do we all have a study guide? All right, now friends, again... If you do have a question, because I know it, a lot is going to be said this morning. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll try our best to get the mic to you. Now, speak up and speak out and speak to the question. Amen? Did you get that? Up, out, and to the question, right? And we'll do our best. Now, if I don't answer, maybe it's going to be answered in the presentation, right? But we'll do our best to, because I know sometimes you have questions. It's a study, and we, we want you to leave here you know, still having those questions lingering in your mind, right? So we'll do our very best. And after the service, we're going to have an anointing, amen? We're going to, we have an other service, so we have a, a, a saint who requests anointing, so just hang with us, and we're going to have the elders and any other elder who may be here to come on up as we follow out James chapter 3, amen? amen. All right, so let, let us pray and move right in this, in this, this, this study. Loving Father in heaven, we, Lord, we are so thankful and grateful that one, that we live in a country where we can worship you unmolested. Yeah. And we treasure that, oh God. We thank you for allowing this country to be a, a, be a refuge for those pilgrims who le left Europe. And you have brought us here from all walks of life, from all backgrounds, Lord, to your providence. And we are here today, Lord, to, to glorify you as our creator and our redeemer and to see how we can best disseminate the truths for this time. May you send your angels to watch over us and keep us safe while we're here. And may your Holy Spirit, Lord, be with us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to move right into this morning's study. Um, we're on the feast days, and this is the third installment of the feast days, friends. We've been saying that 1844 is a bona fide cogent date, amen? And we're, by the grace of God, we're getting to 1844. And if we really understood the significance about this date, friends, I'm telling you, the things that we're now doing will stop. And the things that we should do, we would do. Right? It's a very, very important date. And we've been advocating that these are some good books you need to get in your library. Invest in them, friends. You need to read. Unfortunately... We have entered into a readerless dispensation, right? And those who are reading are reading the wrong things, right? You're going to have to read. So invest in these books by our pioneers. Um, and, as, and these books, they surround one cluster, the sanctuary, amen? And also the great controversy, there are four chapters that, that definitely highlights various aspects of the sanctuary. We still have a few copies left of the feast days, um, these books help, this book helps, helps to debunk the concept that we are still to keep the feast days as the Jews kept them in ancient times, right? We don't keep them, we study them, amen, and we learn from them, and these things can help us in our walks of life. Now, we've discussed that there were seven feast days, four in the spring, three in the fall. These were also called Sabbaths, Sabbath days, yeah, right? And again, there are great insights in studying these, these, these feast days because they give us insights in the plan of salvation, friends, right? And we've discussed that the devil, listen, he doesn't want us to study these feast days. He hates them, and that's why you don't hear much about them in the church. You hear about everything else, but not these feast days, right? And we've discussed, friends, that if you want to, that these feast days have types and anti-types. And we're going to transition now into our types and anti-types study, right? Now, type is defined as an emblem, a pattern. By way of example, anti-types um, is in the place of or in the room of. Now, they are never identical sometimes, but they're sometimes they're similar, amen? We've got to keep these things in mind, right? And again, we've discussed, friends, that if you want to get, you want to see Jesus Christ in all his glory, in all his splendor, 
You have to view him through the lens of the sanctuary, especially these feast days. And as we've said, as we look at each feast day, we've approached it from three perspectives. Historically, you've got to do the historical work because we miss so much. Friends, we're not Jewish. We're not Jews. We're Gentiles. I'm a Jamaican. Yeah? And so we have to go back and study the culture and get the context. And then now we can make a transition and see how these things illuminate Jesus Christ, right? And then we want to say, friends, we want to get a personal application. Knowing these things, friends, is not going to save you. We're saved by a relationship with Jesus Christ. But these things assist in forging that relationship, right? And probably one of the most solemn statements ever uttered in the spirit of prophecy, we are told those people who have assumed the what? The ornaments of the sand. These are people who are teaching the sanctuary, they believe in it. But they have not been clothed in Christ's righteousness will appear what? In the shame of their what? And again, all these feast days, again, they do give us a glimpse in the life, the ministry for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our thematic text for the feast days, for the, for the um, way first fruit, is 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that said. How did Paul arrive at this conclusion? Who taught him? Yeah? And then James chapter 1 verse 18, James says now that we are a kind of first fruits. Yeah? So it doesn't just apply to Christ, it also is applicable to us. And we're going to expound upon James, on um, what James meant by this in the upcoming lecture. Now, we're going to move right into our type. Now, we're filling in the blanks, right, in some cases right now. Typology now, we're seeing how did Christ fulfill this. Typology now. Type, type number one now, right? The third feast was called the feast of, fill it in now, the feast of first fruits. Now, repetition does deepen the impression, but we're going to repeat and enlarge, Right? So the, fir the, third of the third feast was called, of the seven, was called the Feast of First Fruits. Where do you find that? We've covered this early. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 6. Uh, Moses says, uh, ye shall reap the harvest thereof. Then shall he bring a shaft. It was also called the wave sheaft. Is it sheaf or shaft? Sheaft. 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 Seven times is the habit. Sheaft. Sheaf. Sheaf. All right. Good, right? And all the first fruits. So it's biblical, right? Now, what's the anti-type? We believe, fill it in now, that Jesus is referred to as the first fruit. He is the first fruit, right? Is the first fruit. Now, here it is now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 20, and 23. Paul says now, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept and we learned last lord's day that the first fruits embodied the doctrine of the what resurrection right it is a sure doctrine right and verse 23 now but every man in his own order right christ the first fruits afterward they that christ at his coming right so here it is christ is the first fruits in in the book great converse deserve age and says now christ rose from the dead as the first fruits of those that slept and he was the anti-type, uh, he was the anti-type of the wave shaft, right? Sheaft. Sheaft. I'm just going to say wave, right? And you get it, right? So here it is. Even the spirit of prophecy affirms this, right? But we want to get the biblical premise first, right? And then in the book, Great Converse, he says now, Paul says, speaking of the resurrection of the Lord and all his people, Christ, the first fruits afterward, they that of Christ coming, like the wave sheaft, Sheaf, good. Sheaf, 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 all right. Which was the first ripe grain gathered before the harvest. Christ is the first fruits of that immortal harvest of redeemed ones that at the future resurrection shall be gathered into the garner of God. Powerful. So it does embody the resurrection doctrine, right? Now, let's now transition to our second type and anti-type. Fill it in now, right? The first, the, the first, the feast of first fruits was offered on the morrow after the Sabbath in the holy place. On the 16th day of Nisan. And friends, we've, 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 I'm, I'm going to keep on saying this. That so, you're going to see clearly that Sunday had nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus. 
I'm going to show you. The reason why Christ rose was not because it was Sunday. He rose because of the 16th of Nisan. And I'm going to show you that, that remember, these, these were Sabbath, Sabbath days, right? These fell on a date. That meant they rotated. You see? So if you're holding Christ to Sunday, then this feast would rotate. So if, if it fell on a Monday this year, next year will be on a Tuesday. You see, they rotated. So you, you cannot just think because of Sunday, he rose, you're, you're, you're wrong. And friends, unfortunately, our Christian community miss this. They don't understand it. The reason why Christ rose was because of the 16th day of Nisan, because he had to fulfill the type or the anti-type, right? Very, very crucial right now. Leviticus 23, 11 says now, And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted on the morrow after the what? Now we're going to break this down because this is the, this is the and this, this threw me off. I, listen, friends, I'm telling you, I, I, I kind of hit, hit a roadblock. And I said to myself, man, I wish Elder Moses Mason was alive. You know it, Elder. He is a sanctuary man. And I said, man, I wish, and I'm thinking, Lord, who in the world can I get after the sanctuary? I, I, I reached out to my brother, Patrick Jones, and Patrick, you, you know, he's not too versed on it. He's in prophecy. And I said, oh, I know who I can call. Ella Noel Chachate from the Zimbabwean community. So I, I call England. Thank God for WhatsApp. <laughs> call him, boy. So I couldn't get him. I heard that man went back to Zimbabwe. I said, Zimbabwe? So I made some phone calls, and finally I got, got him. And friends, this, he really clarified. He's a sanctuary man. And he really clarified, because I, I hit a wall. And I thank God for him, and that we can come together. Amen? And, and we can help to clarify sometimes where we are stumbling, right? But, we, but we're, we're going we're gonna to clarify this in the study, right? So, and this now, we're told in pages and prophets, please read some Please read now. The feast of the, the first. The first and the seventh day were days of holy convocation, mm -hmm. when no servile work was to be performed. On the second day of the feast, the first fruits of the year's harvest were presented before God. All right. Barley was the earliest grain in Palestine, and at the opening of the feast, it was beginning to ripen. Watch it now. A sheaf of this grain was waved by the priest before the altar of God mm -hmm. as an acknowledgement that all was his. Not until this ceremony had been performed was the harvest to be gathered. All right, now, let's go to anti-type. Let's see how Christ fulfilled this type now, right? On the very same day and T-I-M-E, Jesus presented himself as the first fruits before the Father in the holy place, brothers and sisters. Not just only on the day, but on the what? You see, God is a God of time. You're going to see that, friends. God is a God of time. The very, I'm going to show you very, very fascinating. And this confirms without a doubt the validity that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Amen. Friends, I'm telling you, they, they, these feasts nail him to the, to the carpet. He is guilty of being the Messiah. Literally. I'm not going to show you. No other religious deity can match up to these things in the details. Now, we are told this in great controversy now. So profound. Type, these types were fulfilled not only as to the what? Event, but as to the what? Time. Friends, so we, listen, we, we have to nail down a time. If I say to you, what time is it right now? What time is it, somebody? Talk to me. What time is it now? 1209, that's time. So we want to find a T-I-M-E for this feast. Very, very important. Right now, friends, one of the books that, that, that I, I strongly recommend, you get, as a matter of fact, if you can get all of Alfred Edishim's book, you need to invest in this man's book. The Spirit of Prophecy relied heavily on it. He relied heavily. He is probably the most, the most able Jewish scholar out there. Well, it's the dead, but he was in his writings. Listen, this man, this is it. 
You, and if you're going to study the sanctuary in the life of Jesus, you need to invest in his books. Now, I gave you them, the list of them, and get the heart back. Yeah? Get the heart because they do, they're durable. They are, as a matter of fact, they're so good, I'm going to get me a set for, for Jamaica. You know what I'm saying? I need to get books here and books there. Very, very good book if you're going to study the sanctuary and the life of Jesus. Yeah, even the Bible because the Bible is Jewish. So you have to view these things through the Jewish lens, right? Excellent author. Now, so I'm quoting now, and I'm quoting the temple by Edishim now. Now, look what Edishim says now about the same time that, the, that, that they were taking Jesus' body to the tomb. He says there was another procession. Now, watch it now. Please read on, so not now, a little later. A little later, later on in the evening of that same day, just as it was growing dark, a noisy throng followed delegates from the Sanhedrin outside the city and across the book Kidron. Kidron. It was a diff very different procession and for a very different purpose. Watch it now. From the small band of mourners, which just about the same time carried the body of the dead savior from the cross to the rock hewn tomb, wherein no man had yet been laid, while the one turned into the garden, perhaps to one side, the other emerged amidst loud demonstrations in a field across Kidron, which had been marked out for the purpose. So as they were getting ready now to harvest the first fruits, one procession went to the Kidron Valley to thrust in the sickle. One procession now was bringing Jesus to the tomb. Little did they know that type was about to meet anti-type. Watch it now, brother. So he goes on to say now, please read now. Now, we've covered this already, but we're going to read it again, right? On the day of the what? On the day of Passover, the 14th of Nisan, the spot where the first sheaf to be reaped was marked by delegates from the Sanhedrin. So they had gone down to the Kidron Valley, sister, sister, sister foot, and marked out a shaft of a spot to be harvest on the morrow after the Sabbath. Because they couldn't mark it on the Sabbath. Please read now, right? They did this by using a red cord to bind together into three bundles the standing barley designated to be cut down. All right. When the time for gathering the sheaf had arrived on the evening of the weekly Sabbath during the Passover Feast of Unleavened Bread, as the sun is setting, a large, loud crowd of worshipers followed delegates from the Sanhedrin outside the city and across the book Kidron. Each with a sickle and basket, three designated men of the delegation would position themselves to reap the bound and mark out barley. However, to bring out all that was distinctive in the ceremony, the harvesters first asked the bystanders three times each these five questions. Where now? Has the sun gone down? Uh-huh. With this sickle? Yes. Into this basket? All right. On this Sabbath? All right. And lastly, shall I reap? Remember, they could not reap until the sun had gone down. But it was already marked out. Now watch this now. Each time? Each time receiving an answer in the affirmative from the crowd and elders, they cut down barley to the amount of a tenth of a homer. One ephah, or ten omers, or three shears, which is equal to about ten quarts. Now, I thought this was, this was insignificant. And friends, you know what I've learned in the Bible? You know when you read Genesis, and he begot, and he begot him, and he begot him, and he be don't, don't run past that. Those are imperative. So, Sister Foote, I'm saying all these, what, ten omer, one omer, ah, by, I made a big mistake. Because the details are in these tenths of an omer and one ephah and ten omers and three shares. What does all this got to do with the, the barleys? Friends, it makes, a, I'm gonna, it makes, a, it just changed the landscape. Now watch it now. So, he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted on the morrow after the what? Now, there is a confusion and Edishim clears it up. The expression the morrow on after the Sabbath. What did it really mean, Sister Foot? Here it is now. The expression of the morrow Sabbath, Leviticus 23:11, has sometimes been misunderstood as applying that the presentation of the so-called first sheaf was to be always made on the day following the of the what? Passover. 
as Alagnania's salusion to uh, the feast in the same chapter, it means not the weekly Sabbath, but the day of the festival. Because remember, the day of the Sabbath, these feast days were called Sabbaths. So is it a weekly seven-day Sabbath? Or is it a feast day Sabbath? It has to be a feast day Sabbath because if it was a weekly Sabbath, they wrote, uh, the, the feast days rotated. So one day it may fell on a Sabbath, the next day on a Exactly. But they were called Sabbaths. Look what he says now, right? He says, and the testament of Josephus, skip on down now, and the Jewish tradition leaves no room to doubt that this instance we are to understand by the Sabbath of the 15th of Nisan on whatever the day of the week it might fall. So it's not a weekly Sabbath, but of the ceremonial Sabbath. But it just happened that the day that Jesus died, God orchestrated that the unleavened bread fell on a weekly Sabbath, thus it became a high Sabbath. But prior to this, it may not have always fallen on a weekly Sabbath. Because these days rotated. And that's why I'm saying, if you are saying the reason why Christ rose was because of Sunday, you miss it. Because the first fruits never always fell on a Sunday. It rotated. You see, friends, and that's the big difference. Now, let me break it down now. Illustration. The morrow after the Sabbath. Now, the 15th day was unleavened bread, right? They ate unleavened bread for how long? How many days? Seven days. Now, so even when the, even when the sun set on the seventh day Sabbath, they were still in a feast day, which was a Sabbath. You see? Now, watch it now. On the 16th was the first of Feast of First Fruits, right? Which was the first day, which we call Sunday, right? And then the 17th would be the second day, which we call Monday, right? Now, when were they required to thrust in the shaft? The evening. Now, remember what Genesis said now. And this is where I, I, need, to, I need to qualify next week, last Sabbath, right? How do we date the morning, the day? The evening... And the morning was the what? First day. And this is where Sister Foot was alluding to. You're correct, right? Here it is now. So what came first? Even in the morning? The evening. So when sun sets Saturday this evening, the first day begins. But the first day have two parts. It have the evening and the morning. Now, when the Bible says now on the morrow after the Sabbath, some versions say on the morning after the Sabbath which would not be the evening, it must be the latter. Exactly. Now watch it now. So, this is how the Jewish day, so you had the evening, right? After evening now, can we say, um, even to evening, you keep your Sabbath, right? Then you'd have twilight. Twilight is a little bit of light in between evening and darkness. Now, where is Christ within this feast? He's in a tomb. He's in a tomb now. Remember, unleavened bread, you're still, on, you're still under unleavened bread. Seven days, right? Now, after twilight now, what, what comes next? Darkness. Darkness, right? Darkness. And after darkness now, what will happen now? We have daybreak. Is before the daybreak. It's a little window before daybreak right now. And then we have the morning. Watch it. Then we have the morning, right? Now, look what happened now. When we put Christ's resurrection, and, and you're going to see clearly, we put Christ's resurrection, bang, right there. Be, be, just after the darkness, just before daybreak. And I'm going to show you why Christ couldn't have risen nine nine o'clock. I'm going to show you why. This is where we, we, we will put Christ's resurrection. I'm, I'm, it's going to be clear after a while, right? Now, and then now we have even, which ends Sunday and opens in Monday. So this will be Monday evening. 
You see, because the, from even to even is one day, but the, the evening comes before the morning. It's kind of almost, almost like, I wouldn't say backward, but it's like, for us it's like on, on, our mind will run like that, right? But this, this is how it is. Is that clear? Now watch this now. All right now. So go back to the wave sheaf now. So they go out since the foot. And once the sun was set, what did they do? They cut, which was in the evening, right? Now, what did they do with it after they cut it? Talk to me. That's not a trick question. It's in the text. What did they do with it? Where did they take it? So they, now, look what the Bible says now. When they brought it to the temple now, now, the Bible said now, and he shall wave it before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath to the priest shall he wave it. Watch it now. But you see, I always believe, and it's good to read, that when they brought the sheaf, they, the shaft, they just wave it. Hey, they, they wave it. And that was it. No, the waving, they did, wave, they did wave it. But there was a lot more in it. Now look at the text now. It's not just waving it. Verse 12 says now, And he shall offer that day when he what? Wave the what? I what? A he lamb without a what? So it's not just the sheaf was spread. They had to have a he lamb without blemish, right? Of the first year. Watch it now. For a burnt offering to the Lord. Verse 20 says now, And the what? Meat offering thereof shall be two tenths deals. What kind of deal that, huh? Of fine fine mingle, a flour mingle with oil and offering made with fire by the Lord uh, for a sweet savor and a drink offering thereof and with shall be wine and a fourth of a hin. Now what in the world is a hin? So it's not just a priest waving a lot more in it. Now, watch it now. In order for us to understand this text, Leviticus 23, we have to read Leviticus chapter 2 right now. This is not in your, drop this down now, because I'm going to show you some things, right? Leviticus 2 verse 11 speaks of the wave sheaf in a broader sense. Look what happened now. Verse 11 says now, as for the oblation of the first fruits, ye shall offer them unto the Lord, but they shall not be burnt on the altar of the savor, of the sweet savor. And every oblation of meat offering shall thou season with what? Salt. Neither shall thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thy offerings thou shalt offer salt. 14 says now, and if thou shalt offer a meat offering of thy first fruits unto the Lord, thou shalt offer for the meat offering of thy first fruits green ears, corn dried by fire, even corn beaten out of full ears. Now what in the world is that? But that was a part of the first fruits. To be that's how it was. Now, Elford Adashim now, being a Jew. He explains the whole situation. Look what he says now. After the sheaf was cut, which is this, after it was cut, we just think it's brought to the temple and the, and the priest just wave it. And that's it. No, 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 no. There's a whole lot that goes into it. Elishim says now, so now please read now. After the sheaf, after the sheaf was cut, the people praised the Lord and retraced their path up the Temple Mount's slopes. It was now officially the morrow after the Sabbath. Watch it now. The barley ears were then brought into the court of the temple and thrust out with canes or stalks to not injure the barley corn. Woo! So it was cut. It was brought there. The priest now begin to thrash, thrash it. Preparation. Thrash it. But look what else they have to do now. 
The barley kernels from the barley corn were then parched, parched. on a pan perforated with holes so that each grain might be touched by the fire. Uh -huh. Leviticus 2.14. Then exposed to the wind in a winnowing process, the barley kernels were tossed into the wind to separate the kernels from the chaff. The head of the barley is very soft and easily winnowed. Now this was done in the temple because the temple service, they even worked by night. Now the average Jew didn't see this, but the priests were working behind the scenes to get this thing ready to be offered for the Lord. Look what he says. Please read now. Thirdly, the corn. The corn thus prepared was ground into a barley mill, uh -huh. which left the whole of the hull. Mercy. The flour was ground until the flour was sufficiently fine, mm -hmm. which was ascertained by one of the Gisborim treasurers plunging his hand into it. The sifting process is continued until the flour no longer adheres to the hands. Watch it now. The one ephah, or mm -hmm. ten omers of barley was cut down. Watch it now. Only one omer of barley flour, about a quart, was offered on the altar in the temple on the 16th Sunday after the weekly Sabbath during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mercy. The rest of the flour might be redeemed and used for any purpose. Now, I always wondered why. When Jesus rose, Matthew 27 tells us he, he, some other people was raised with him. Why didn't he not bring them with him when he went to heaven that morning? Because the principle of the temple, all you needed was of that old barley was what? Only one omer of flour was needed. You see, these all make a difference. Because I was, I said, oh God, you, you raised them. Why did you leave them on earth for 40 days? Why not bring them with you that morning when you went to heaven as the wave sheet? Why you wait so long? And it dawned on me, duh, because only one omer of the flower was presented. So we are of the opinion that when the priest waved the, 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 the shaft, he waved the whole sheath. He waved the, no, 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 no. It wasn't like that. These only make a difference. Please read now, right? All right? Look, look, look what happened now. He said now, the what? The quart of barley flour was mixed with a log. A log equals one twelfth hin. Hin. There's a hin in the Bible. Hin, right? Which equals one twelfth pint, which is 1.3 ounces or approximately an ounce. All right? Of olive oil, a handful of frankincense mm -hmm. put upon it, salt added, and then presented to the Lord by Waven. This was what is meant by the presentation of the first or wave sheaf on 16th day during the week of the Passover feast of unleavened bread. Next, a handful was taken out and burned on the altar. The remainder belonged to the priest. Wow. Talk to me now. Talk to me now. Get the mic. She needs a mic. And by the way, let me just say this. If you read all these steps, Christ embodied all of them. Oh, that's exactly what I was asking. Because he was that lamb. Frankincense he got when, remember that, what did they bring when, 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 when they came to his, to his, his birth? If you see that, friends. So all these little steps in details, Christ, he was the embodiment of everything. That's why he presented himself. All these other guys who came up, they were nowhere near that. So it's not just him cutting, they're cutting down some, 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 some barley and the priest just... And, that, that, and that's the mind, that's what you got to think Jewish. That's what, that's what I used to think. It make, and that's why they needed time. They were working throughout the night to get this thing ready. And that's why Jesus did not bring those who, whom he rose Sunday morning because he only needed one or more. He brought the, himself, which is himself. And I'm going to show you why he, why he raised them up next week. 
but he brought them 40 days later. And that's when David says now, who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. That text was not quoted when Christ went the first time. That was 40 days later. Make sense, friends? Now watch it now. So, look at the text now through a, a, a more bigger lens. And he shall wave the shaft before the Lord. It is true to be accepted on the morrow after the Sabbath. A, a lot of process took place. And I know Jew just cut the, cut the barley and ate it anyway. It had to be prepared. You see, friends, a process went through it. And that's why the time is important. Now, third type now. Watch it now. The sacrifice in the temple was offered at a set time. Numbers 28, 4 and 8. The morning sacrifice was at the third hour. Fill it in now. And the evening sacrifice was at the ninth hour. We're going to break this down now, right? You see, they could, the priest couldn't just, okay, I cut the wave sheaf the morrow after the Sabbath, said Belinda, and I'm going to offer it anytime. What time are you going to do? I don't know, I'm going to sleep in and about the next half an hour. I'm going to, no, 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 no. God, you see, outside, outside, this is the Jewish day now. Now, we covered this, right? The third hour was 9 a.m. That's in the Jewish hour. It's clock, right? Hour 9 a.m. The sixth hour was 12 p.m. The ninth hour was 3 p.m. And the eleventh hour was 5. And the, and the working day end at, at 6. Now, outside of the Sabbath, the seventh day, Brotherfoot, there were two other times that God had fixed that his people should meet with him. It was the third hour and the ninth hour. All through the Bible, you're going to see third and ninth. Third and ninth. When Peter went to pray, it was the third hour. Cornelius offered sacrifice, it was the ninth hour. Arms, third and ninth. Outside of the seventh day Sabbath, it was third and ninth. Third and ninth. Now, this is the Jewish... The third hour, right? This is where we are. The time frame. Now, remember we said when Jesus died, he died on the third hour. He died the ninth hour. And the ninth hour had to be between 2.30 and 3 o'clock. Now look at this now. So the two hours of worship, we want to find when did the priest wave the shaft? She before the Lord. Because that was the same time that Jesus presented himself. Now, again, we, we discussed there were only two times sacrifice was offered in the service, in the sanctuary. It was the third hour, morning, and the ninth hour, even. And that is why the spirit of prophecy says we should have fixed time for worship. Now, as, 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 our, as our schedule differ, but have a fixed time. Get together with your family. Okay, we're going to have worship at 7. Okay, make it 7. Not 7 today, 5 tomorrow, 1 the next day. You miss Thursday, you wheel and come again Friday, and you just helter-skelter. Have a fixed time, and this fixed time should go with you. Wherever you go, right? Then the evening now, right? Now, here's a fixed time now. Jot this text down. Numbers 28, 4 and 8. Moses says now, the one lamb shall be offered in the what? Morning, which is the third hour, which is 9 o'clock hour time. And the other lamb shall be offered in the what? Even. Verse 8 says, and, and the other lamb shall be offered in the evening. So here we see morning, and evening. Morning and evening was third hour, morning. Evening, ninth hour, friends. Apart from that, there was no other time where God was with his people, apart from the Sabbath. The, the sanctuary was run by, the, by, 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 by that time frame. Third, ninth. And everybody in the Bible who prayed, it was the third hour they were praying, or the ninth hour. You're going to see all through the Bible if you're looking at it now. Now, this is what, this is now what, um, um, 
Edishim says now about the night in the temple. Look what he says now. Please read now. For the service of the officiating ministers was not, was not only by day, but also at night in the temple. All right. From scripture, we know that the ordinary services of the sanctuary consisted of the morning and evening sacrifices. All right. According to general agreement, the morning sacrifice was brought at the third hour, corresponding to hour nine o'clock. Uh-huh. But the preparations for it must have commenced more than two hours earlier. Ooh. So even though the sacrifice was at nine, you see, you can't expect to be at church at nine and get up at nine. Whereas if you live down, down way, way where I live, you know what I'm saying? I live in never, never, never line up north. You see, you have to get up from a little bit more earlier Prepare yourself so you can be on time at nine. You see? And that is why the priest knew that the wave sheathed had to be offered at the third hour. They made sure all that beating and threshing and grinding and flushing and beating and threshing was prepared long before. So when nine came, the priest could now just present that to the Lord. Therefore, Jesus could not have risen at 9 o'clock and talked to Mary and everybody else and be in heaven at 9. He had to have gotten up before that, got himself together. You know what I'm saying? Got the cobwebs out of his for mentally, for lack of word. Get himself together, have a little dialogue, and then take off to meet the appointed time in the sanctuary, brothers and sisters. It's all about time. And we're working at, and by the way, did you know that when Pentecost happened in Acts 2, when Peter said to the man, These men are drunk, what did Peter say? It's the third hour. You see? And I believe that when Pentecost happened, the inauguration, it happened at the third hour. God is working off these two times, the third hour and the ninth. Now, look what happened now. Please read now. A few what? Few, if any worshipers, could have witnessed the actual slain of the Lamb, which took place immediately on opening the great temple gates. Mm -hmm. Possibly they may have gathered chiefly to join in the prayer at the time of incense. All right. In the modified sense, then, of understanding by the morning sacrifice, the whole service, it no doubt coincided with the third hour of the day, or 9 a.m. Here is now. This may explain how, on the day of Pentecost, such a multitude could so readily come together to hear in their various tongues the wonderful works of God, seeing it was the third hour. That's exactly. The third hour was when they came to Worship the sacrifice. And that was when the same time Pentecost happened. Please read now. When they would all be in the temple. All right. The evening sacrifice was fixed by the law, Numbers 28, 4, and 8, as between the evenings. That is, between the darkness of the gloomen and that of the night. All right. According to the rabbis, the lamb was slain at the eighth hour and a half, or about 2.30 p.m., and the piece is laid on the altar an hour later, about 3.30 p.m. Hence, when Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour, Acts 3.1, it must have been for the evening sacrifice. There it is. Right? So you're going to find, friends, whenever they met to pray, it was either third or ninth. Third or ninth. Right? All right, he says now, the even sacrifice somewhat short. Okay, please read now, the even, okay, you, you can get the point. But the point I'm trying to make is this now. They were on time. It had to be offered on time now. Watch this now. What's the anti-type now? Jesus presented himself as the first fruits before his father, either at the third hour or the ninth hour, but based on scriptural and spirit of prophecy chronology, we lean more towards the 
third hour. So when the Bible says, on the morrow after the Sabbath, Moses is now hoping you understand that there were fixed time to offer the sacrifice. You're still in the morrow because the Sabbath is gone. So Moses is saying, you should know it's either on the third hour or the ninth hour. Now, based on how the chronology of Jesus, we deduce that he presented himself at the third hour. Now, here are some texts that, that sets the stage. How, did you, how do you arrive at the third hour? Here are some texts now. Now, we're going to read them very quickly. All these texts have one thing in common. They do repeat Christ's resurrection, but they each give a little bit of detail. So we're trying to build a case now. Did Christ actually present himself at the third hour, which is nine o'clock? Question. We're, yeah, we're, what? We're gonna question again. Okay, the morrow after the Sabbath. Well, the ninth hour would have passed because the ninth hour is three o'clock. Sunset at. Good question. Okay, let me, let me just qualify. Let me just show it. Okay. All right. So the ninth hour would have been. About, if sunset at 6, the ninth hour would have been about what? 3. So to get the next ninth hour, you'd have to come evening, twilight, darkness, daybreak, morning, 12, 1, 2, 3. So it would be the next day, which is, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You, you, you couldn't get the ninth. Once the ninth hour passed here, it's sunset. The next ninth hour had to be 3 o'clock off in, after the morning. That's where you put it, right? All right. 3 p.m. It was 3 p.m. It was 3 p.m. It was 3 p.m. It was 3 p.m. our time, right? Now, here are some texts that we're, we're going to read now. All right, first one is Matthew 28. And the Bible says now, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene, the mother of Mary, to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Watch it now. Verse 5 says now, and the angel answered and said unto, unto her, the woman, Fear not, fear not ye, for I know whom you seek, Jesus, which is crucified. He is not what? For he is what? Now, remember what she said? She came as it began to dawn towards the first of the week. So he had to have gotten up before the dawn. Because when they got there at dawn, he's already gone. Remember? That the, the shaft was prepared a few hours before it was presented to the Lord. You see? Now watch it now. M Mark 16 says now, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of, G um, mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come to anoint him. And very early in the what? The first day of the... They came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the what? Sun. So where, let me go back to my chart again. And I know um, it's hard for you to keep up. It's about right here. Very early in the morning. Because the evening is the first part of the day. So darkness, they came about right here. You see, very early in the morning. It's still the first day of the week, you know. They came very early in the morning. You see, you see where they are now, right? All right, good. Because I want you to kind of get it because it makes a lot of sense, right, when you look at it right now. All right, let me go back to um, Mark now, right? In the morning, and they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the what? Sun. Look what happened now, right? The Bible says now, and said 
among themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was a very great stone. Right? The Bible says now, and entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting at the right side, clothed with a long white garment, right? And they were frightened. And he saith unto them, Be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, and is what? He is what? Not here. But again, every time they, they seek him, he gets up before they get there. The point is, he gets up a little bit before the breaking of day. You see it now. One more reference now. Luke 24 now. Uh, one to says now. Please read now. So now, now upon the first day of the week. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning. In the morning, not the evening, in the morning. Mm -hmm. Midnight has gone now. Daybreak is breaking now, right? Please read now. They came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. All right. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. But it cut very early in the morning. When they got there, he wasn't there. And it, came, please, and it came to pass now? And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. All right. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. So he is risen. The point is, he, 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 he wakes up. Before they get there. Right? Exactly. And this is where they miss it. And, 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 it, and if you are celebrating Christ's resurrection on Sunday, you're giving validity to the Sunday. And that's what they, they say because the reason why we celebrate Sunday is because Christ rose on Sunday. No! Christ rose because of the 16th day of Nisan. And that thing rotated. If it was on Sunday this day, it could be on Monday next year. But, but it just happened that when type, anti type God in his, in, his, in, his, in his fullness allowed it to line up with the weekly Sabbath. Talk to the mic. So nowhere in the scriptures does it say anything about the first day. It just says the morrow after the Sabbath. After the Sabbath. Mm. And remember, we are still on the 16th day of Nisan. That's why he rose. Not because it was Sunday. And you got to get that because you, you, if you, you, if you, you, hope you miss it. Brother Nick, we need a mic. You need a mic. Somebody help me out, please. Oh, we have another mic here. Can somebody give Brother Nick a mic? And um, I'll get to you. Once the mic gets to you, let, let me know, right? All right. Now, so one more text. We're, we're going to read John now. We want to set the stage. We want to see exactly when Christ, because we want to time him. He died on time. He presented himself on time. Go ahead, Brother Nick. Um, so pretty much what, what you're saying is whoever is worshiping on Sunday is giving credence to um, the sun god. Exactly. Yeah, it's not, nothing to do with Christ's resurrection. It's, 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 it has nothing to do with Christ being resurrected. No. Because again, the, 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 remember the, f the, the, the first fruits, it, it rotated. So again, if it was on Sunday this year, next year, it may be on Monday. And that's why we said it, it was a high, why was it a high? Because it was rare, it was very rare. That it fall on a Sabbath, very, very rare. That's why it's a high, but every other day, it was a regular, regular Sabbath. Just like Christmas. Christmas. It fell on a, the feast days fell on a date, not on a day. The Sabbath fell on a day. Go ahead, my elder. Yes, elder. Um, I like the point you were making. I was just sharing this with Brother Tom. Yes. You will celebrate your birthday today. Mm -hmm. Next year it's going to be on Monday. Exactly. So the Sunday, the Sunday thing with this thing about we celebrate, we worship on Sunday because Christ was resurrected on Sunday does not have no valid point. It's it so hard, the old thing. Yeah. And the reason why, because, you see, they don't understand the sanctuary. Amen. And this is where Amen. we come in, friends. Yeah. We were birthed out of the sanctuary, brothers and sisters. Yeah. We, were, we talk, eat, sleep, drink, dress. The reason why you, you should eat the way you eat. 
It's because of the sanctuary. The reason why you dress the way you dress is because of the sanctuary, friends. Everything we do as a people is out of the sanctuary. We live in the sanctuary. It's all about the sanctuary. Seven day Adventist was, was we were I mean, when we were birthed, Christ was already in the most holy place. And we gotta we will, and that's why they miss it. That's why they, they, they can't get it. They will hold to their Sunday, and unfortunately, the vast majority of us are following them. You, 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 you look at the sermons that are preached around Easter time. They did, and you know, if, they, if, they were, if they were tying the first fruits, it wouldn't be so bad. But they just stuck on Sunday and resurrection. And they miss it. And pray for them. Because many of them are just misled. And they will mislead you. They're not misleading me. Right? Now, look at John now. Please read now. And I, now, the what? The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark All unto right. the sepulcher. Sepulcher, uh -huh. and see the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Sepulchre, sepulchre. all right. Yet but dark. Mary now, watch stood it now. Without hold, hold, on. hold on. So, so the point is now it's still yet dark, right? Verse eleven says now. Look now. Look at the encounter with Jesus now. Please read now, right? But, but Mary, Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting. The one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus was lain. All right. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Watch it now. And when she had thus, when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Watch it now. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabbanoi, which is to say, Master. Watch it now. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he hath spoken these things unto her. Now, look at this now. Note. As Mary Magdalene was about to embrace him, he asked her not to touch him, for he has not yet ascended to God. Why did he go? What's the delay? Why did he just go and come back? Time! You see, he got up. He's still on the third hour and the ninth hour mentality. So he's waiting. On that. He's, 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 he's watching the clock in Jerusalem. Because that's the time he ought to be there. Because type must meet, and the type, not just in the event, but in TIME. So he knows he has about half an hour to play with. Right? Now, why would Jesus command Mary, Mary Magdalene not to touch him? Recall now that the Hebrews could not touch the barley before the first fruits. Right? Could not. Could not touch it. Once, once, once the one omer of the barley sheaf was presented to God by the priest, the barley crop could be harvested for you. Just one omer. And by the time when Christ got up, we learned, Matthew said, he raised a whole lot of people. But why not take them to heaven with you? Because we only one omer. And he was that one omer. No, no. Therefore, typologically now, one omer that was presented to God was offered on the altar of presented Jesus Christ as our first fruits. Since Jesus was the first fruits, he must present himself to the Father and our Father to be accepted as the first fruits for all who will be born again. And therefore, touch. Anyone could touch him. You see, friends, now, I love how Ellen White now brings it together. And she actually uses the right Hebrew word. This word in the original that says, uh, touch me not, it really means hinder me not. 
Now look how it changed the whole landscape now. Now remember, Christ knows third hour sacrifice is about to be happening in the third hour. He's watching the clock. He knows what time it is. Right? Now, Mary detains him. Now you know how some of the same. Listen, listen. They're, they're st Taylor, have a question? Go ahead, Taylor. Where was God? In the sepulchre. Oh, okay. Well, he wasn't there to see obviously he was outside. So he rose Taylor, and he, he was uh, kind of out, and she thought he was the gardener. So he was outside the garden waiting for the time for him to, 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 to he didn't want to go too early, didn't want to go too, too late. So he's kind of, he had about half an hour on time. But good question, right? All right, now. Go ahead now. Even in um, Jesus' command to Mary to go and talk to the disciples, I see him trying to bring a message of hope because I think they were hiding, so maybe they weren't going to be there for the, um, the morning yeah. you know, services, but he is telling her to give a message that he himself yeah. you know, is going to be that offering presented to the Father. I don't Excellent. think they got it, but he was trying. Yeah, and she, she alludes to it. Look what she says now. These are ages now. So she just brings it home now. Look what she says now. So profound. The night. Go ahead. The night of the first day of the week had worn slowly away. So you know we are mentally, right? Now, here is now the what? The darkest hour just before daybreak had come. Uh -huh. Christ was still a prisoner in his narrow tomb. Watch it now. The great stone was in its place. The Roman seal was unbroken. The Roman guards were keeping their watch. And there were unseen watchers. Hosts of evil angels were gathered about the place. All right. Had it been possible, the prince of darkness with his apostate army would have kept forever sealed the tomb that held the Son of God. Mercy. But a heavenly host surrounded the sepulcher. Amen. All right. Amen. Angels. Angels that excel in strength were guarding the tomb and Mercy. waiting to welcome the Prince of Life. Mercy, Lord. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Uh -huh. For the angel of the Lord descended from above. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Clothed with the panoply of God, his, this angel left the heavenly courts. The bright beams of God's glory went before him and illuminated his pathway. Mercy. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. Mm. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Look what she says now. Christ came forth from the tomb glorified and the Roman guard beheld him. Their eyes were riveted upon the face of him whom they had so recently mocked and deride. In this glorified being, they, held, they beheld the prisoner whom they had seen in the judgment hall, mm -hmm. the one for whom they had plaited a crown of thorns. Mm -hmm. This was the one who had stood unresistant before Pilate and Herod, his form lacerated by the cruel scourge. This was he who had been nailed to the cross at whom the priests and rulers, full of self-satisfaction, had wagged their heads, saying, he saved others, himself he cannot save. And that's so true. Spurgeon said he could not save himself and save us. Could not. Please read now. This was he who had been laid in Joseph's new tomb. Mm. The decree of heaven had loosed the captive. Yes. Mountains piled upon mountains mm. over, this, over his sepulcher could not have prevented him from coming forth. Mercy. When Jesus was laid in the grave, Satan triumphed. Mm -hmm. He dared to hope that the Savior would not take up his life again. He claimed the Lord's body and set his guard about the tomb, seeking to hold Christ a prisoner. Yes. He was bitterly angry when his angels fled at the approach of the heavenly messenger. When he saw Christ come forth in triumph, he knew that his kingdom would have an end Mercy. and that he must finally die. Now watch it now. Christ arose. 
Christ arose from the dead as the first fruits of those that slept. Now watch the time now. You've got to synchronize the time because we're leading towards the third hour. You got to get that context now. Look what she says now. He was the antitype of the wave sheaf, and his resurrection took place on the very day when the wave sheaf was to be presented before the Lord. Very day. Mm -hmm. Very day. Please read now. For more than a thousand years, this symbolic ceremony had been performed. From the harvest fields, the first heads of ripened grain were gathered. And when the people went up to Jerusalem to the Passover, the sheaf of first fruits was waved as a thank offering before the Lord. Uh -huh. Not I until see. this was presented could the sickle be put to the grain and it be gathered into sheaves. The sheaf dedicated to God represented the harvest. So Christ, the first fruits, represented the great spiritual harvest to be gathered for the kingdom of God. All right, now, let's look at now Mary and Christ dialogue now. Very important now. I'm skipping. She turned away, even from the angels, thinking that she must find someone who could tell her what had been done with the body of Jesus. Another voice addressed her, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Through her tear-dimmed eyes, Mary saw a form of a man, and thinking that he, it was the garden. You ought to read Charles Spurgeon's sermon on supposing he was the garden. Saints, I tell you, boy, if that don't move you, something, nothing else will. Supposing, just suppose, he proposed, he was the garden. That was the man's thesis. Very, very powerful, right? Right? <clears throat> She said, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. If this rich man's tomb, this is so, this is so touching, if this rich man's tomb was thought too honorable, a burial place for Jesus, she herself would provide a place for him. There was a grave that Christ's own voice had made vacant, the grave where Lazarus had lain. Might she not there find a burial place for her Lord? She felt that the, to care for his precious Christ crucified body would not be a great consolation to her in her grief. Now, but now in his own familiar voice, Jesus said to her, Mary, now she knew that it was not a stranger who was addressing her and turning she saw before him the living Christ. In her joy she sought, she, she forgot that she had been crucified, springing towards him as to embrace his feet. She said, Rabboni, but Christ raised his hand, saying what? Now, this is different, you know. This, this changed the landscape. Now, you know you have some people, some of the saints. So when they call me, I have to be either driving to some far place, are doing some work. Because when they call you, it ain't high pastor, how you doing? God bless you, see you later. They, they, they gonna talk. And they gonna, they gonna detain you. And that's how it is. And bless God for them, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta make sure I have a time to give to the saints. Because you can't just say, no, no, the pastor, we are Russia. No, you know what I'm saying? So, I could imagine now Mary was one of those long talker. <laughs> she wanted to sit, come sit on Jesus and we need to talk. But Jesus knew that the third hour was coming. The way the morning sacrifice, woman, Mary, I say, but, oh, detain me not. Why don't detain? Why not detain me? Exactly, Brother Foot. That's why we lean towards the third hour as opposed to the ninth hour. We believe here now, friends, that at the same time Jesus knew that the third hour, the wave shaft, would, she would be raised in the, in the holy place. The Omer. So he himself now could not have gone to the most holy place that the wicked NIV Bible teaches. Because if we said that, we're saying he bypassed all of this and he, he, he ushered in the seven feasts. 
Friends, at this point now, type, make anti-type. Jesus' presentation to God occurred at approximately 9 a.m. on the 16th Sunday morning. Even as the first fruit barley flour mixed with oil and frankincense was being weighed before God in Jerusalem, God the Father accepted Jesus as the first fruit of those that had fallen asleep and all were created. He didn't have to bring the rest because only one omer was needed. And he had the frank, he had everything embodied in him. Yeah. Yeah, there were all, all that stuff. You're going to find everything that was done to the, to the barley in the sanctuary, Christ, in some part of his life, it was done to him. Now, so Christ now gets to heaven. I love this now. He is in heaven now, in the holy place. Same time, the third hour. Type means anti-type. Not just to event, but to T-I-M-E. Look what she says. Please read now. Jesus refused. Jesus refused to receive the homage of his people until he had the assurance that his sacrifice was accepted by the Father. Watch it now. He ascended to the heavenly courts. Mercy. And from God himself heard the assurance that his atonement for the sins of men had been ample. Yes. That through his blood all might gain eternal life. Mercy. The Father ratified the covenant made with Christ that he would receive repentant and obedient men Man. and would love them even as he loves his son. Yes. Christ was to complete his work and fulfill his pledge to make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Isaiah 13, 12. All power in heaven and on earth was given to the prince of life, and he returned to his followers in a world of sin, that he might impart to them of his power and glory. She says, now while the, sa I love this, while the Savior was in God's presence. So where is God the Father at this time? What part, of, what part of heaven and sanctuary? In the holy place because the wave sheaf was offered in the holy place. Right? I love this now. Receiving gifts for his church. What gifts? Where in, the Bible you, where in the Bible do you find Jesus imparting gifts? Paul says in Ephesians, when he went to heaven, he gave gifts unto man and he led captivity captive. What were some of the gifts that he got from his father? He made some pastors, evangelists, teachers, and prophets. Remember, Prior to this, prophets spoke to, the, to Israel. But after they stoned Stephen, prophets spoke to the church. And did you know after 34 AD, God never spoke to ancient Israel by a prophet? All the prophets were now spoken to the church. And the next time ancient Israel hear a prophet, is when they embrace the writings of Ellen G. White. That's the prophet. That's the prophet saints. Right? Please read now. No, no, this is where they should have been rejoicing, but they didn't understand it. Please read now. She says now, the disciples. The disciples thought upon his empty tomb yes. and mourned and wept. The day that was a day of rejoicing to all heaven was to disciples a day of uncertainty, confusion, and perplexity. Their unbelief in the testimony of the woman gives evidence of how low their faith had sunk. Mercy. The news of Christ's resurrection was so different from what they had anticipated that they could not believe it. It was too good to be true, they thought. They had heard so much of the doctrines and the so-called scientific theories of the Sadducees mm -hmm. that the impression made on their minds in regard to the resurrection was vague. was vague. They scarcely knew what the resurrection from the dead could mean. They were unable to take in the great subject. Remember Mark said he spoke to them of the resurrection and they didn't know what. What, what, what are you talking about, Jesus? And they had all these types and for years. Go ahead, sister. But they had heard so much of it, and then they had heard so few people who didn't believe it. Yeah. Since that time, 
Yes. But you know what happened? They were so institutionalized. Friends, and I'm telling you, I love my church. But we can become so churchy. Policy, we can be so hooked to policies that a man is out there dying for the want of truth and the policy states, if you are a part of Florida Conference, you cannot link up with a brother who's a part of Southeastern Conference. And we, we hold these policies as if they were principles. We will die for a policy and transgress the principles. All the time I see, friends, and policies vary. Every four years, they shuffle the deck. You'd be surprised the different policies that Southeastern Conference have and for the conference. You wonder which is right? Yeah. Which kind of your conference you're on, that's that one is right. At that time, I'm saying, friend, so we don't want to be like the disciples where we see it. Look what happened now, right? Go ahead, in the mic, go ahead now. Okay. First, there's a question online on YouTube. Vanny asks, was Moses resurrected with a glorified body as well? Yes, yes, Moses got, Moses got, got Moses went to heaven, and he, he didn't die again, right? And he's a type of Christ. That's why his body didn't see corruption. He was a type of Christ in parallel, right? Go ahead, Sister Vivian. Okay, um, so the covenant was made between Christ and the Father before the foundation of the world. Definitely. That, that Jesus would die. Yes. And although Jesus, although Jesus died um, at the cross, his death was not full because he had not ascended to the yes. Father. Mm -hmm. So, and um, although he was resurrected, everything was not complete, not complete until he went to heaven because it says here the father ratified the covenant exactly. so it's, so unless jesus went to heaven could not everything was not complete yes yeah that's what the sandra is so important. Uh, important and it could not be completed until he entered into the final phase of his ministry right. which is 1844. you see friends it, 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 it's this, the sanctuary is salvation and unfortunately the only group of people right now who have who should know this thing are seven day Adventists. And friends, it, it, we're in bad shape. No, it, does, it, it just began, really. It just began, right? And what was finished at the cross? It is finished. The sacrifice, not the, sac not, not the sacrificial system, but not the plan of salvation or redemption. He had to fulfill the unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, and exactly he had to do all of that. Right now. So he goes to heaven now. Right after 9 o'clock, the ceremony is done. He comes, now this is, this is some Star Trek, but he comes back to earth. On that same day, he's on the road to Emmaus now. Now look at the time frame now. Bible says now, we're still in John. And behold, two men went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlong. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. This is after the third hour now, right? But their eyes were, but their, but their, but their eyes were holding and, and should not, that should not know him. And he said unto him, what manner of communication are these that you have one with another as they talk and are sad? And one of them rose, whose name was Cleophas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Hast thou not known the things which were come to pass in these days? But their eyes, all right? But they, but, but they constrain him. So, so the dialogue is going on now. He's talking now, and he's quoting. Then these men, they're saying now, but they constrain him, saying, Abide with us. For it is toward, ooh. If now, if it's towards evening, then it couldn't be the evening sacrifice. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's almost the ninth hour now. You should, so why? You, you should be in heaven. So he had already, that's why, we, that's why we lean towards the third hour, him in heaven. Because at this time now, when you skip on down now, and they said the day is far, it's almost even now. Sun gonna set. 
right? And it came to pass, as he sat to meet, he looked and he blessed the bread and so forth, and then he vanished. Beat me up, Scotty. Gone. So he disappeared. Evelyn. Now, remember one of the texts that they use to keep Sunday? Well, the disciples are locked themselves away now in the room. And the Bible says now, he appears now in the midst of them. Luke says now, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith, peace. But they were frightened. And when you read the text, the reason why they were hiding was because of fear of the Jews. Now, the, our first day friends used this situation to say that they were there to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. But hitherto, they did not even believe that he rose. Now, when Jesus came and met with them, it was already evening, sun would set. That really tells me that it was Monday. You see, so the whole scenario that they met to keep church service, that was, that, that was Monday evening. Sunday was already out the door. Friends, it does not make sense. You know what? Because it's nonsense. It's nonsense. Now, watch it now. We're, we're, we're going we're to pause here. And, you know, they said, my hands and my feet. We covered it last week. And now, this is what we're going to pause on to pick up back. Because we're going to look at, the, 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 at the, 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 another typology. Watch it now. How long did Jesus spend on earth after his resurrection and first ascension? Luke is now chronicled in the event now. Look what Luke says now. In Luke chapter, Acts chapter 1, verse 3, as we close, right? The former treaties I have made, O Theophilus, of all that, Je all that Jesus began to both teach. So in other words, I'm not leaving anything out. The Bible says now, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion, crucifixion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of things pertaineth unto his kingdom. Friends, he spent forty days with them. Now that is significant because Pentecost is 50. So 10 days from now was Pentecost. And the disciples only had 10 days to get their act together. Bear in mind, when, past, when Pentecost happened, it was the third hour. There were millions of Jews in Jerusalem at that time. They were in Jerusalem. How many received the Holy Ghost? A hundred and twenty. What happened to Caiaphas? He was in Jerusalem. Remember Christ told him, do not depart. So they had to be in Jerusalem. That's one thing. But friends, being in Jerusalem alone would not guarantee you getting the Holy Ghost. You see, friends, it is true. We tend to castigate those who have, quote, unquote, separated from the church. Uh, yeah, we, we, we tend to look at them in the evil eye. And we pride ourselves that I attend a conference church. And we should. Nothing is wrong with that. We, we encourage that. But friends, attending a conference church alone will not save you. It will not guarantee you the latter rain. Because they were in Jerusalem, you know. But they did not have the connection. That, and the disciples only had 10 days to get their shift. 
together. Ten days. Now, so this is the question now. During that 40 days now, what was happening, Elder? What, what, was, the, what was happening in the, in the vicinity of Jerusalem? Remember we quoted this text? Isaiah chapter 26, verse 19, gives us a glimpse of what was happening while Christ was 40 days with the disciples. Isaiah says now, Thy dead man, thy dead man shall live together with my dead body shall they arise. What? What? With my dead body shall they arise? What, what is that? Where do you find in the Bible anybody arising with Christ's dead body? Where do you find that? Matthew chapter 27. Where the Bible says, well, let's go there. Let me look like, whoa. <laughs> well, you talk quickly as we close. Matthew 27. Here it is now, as we close. And we're going to pause here because this is some serious stuff, brothers and sisters. Matthew 27. Look at verse number, uh, Matthew 27. Look at verse number 52. 52. The Bible says this now. Are we there? Look at verse number 50, 51. Uh, 50, 50. Are we there? Are we there? Ready? Jesus, when he had cried with, again with a loud voice, he let the ghost. And behold, the what? The temple was rent twain from top to? And the earth did what? And the rocks did what? Here is Isaiah's prophecies now. 52 says now. And the graves were what Isaiah says. Thy dead man shall live together with my dead body, and sh shall they arise, right? And awake and sing, they will do it. Bible says now, and behold, 52 says now, and the graves were open, and many, not all, many of the bodies of the saints, who is a saint? These are people who, they, they didn't die keeping Sunday. At one of the texts, one of the, of a saint, here is the what? Patience of the? Saints. Here are they that what? So these people we know had to have been keeping the commandments of God, including the seventh-day Sabbath. Right? And what happened now? Where am I? And arose. Look what happened now. And went out of their graves after his resurrection. And where did they go? To heaven with him. What the text says. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So for 40 days, Elder, these people were traversing the city of Jerusalem. Why were they witnessing? Why couldn't you use the disciples? Because they themselves didn't even believe that Jesus was risen. It tells me, friend, if all else fail, God will even raise the dead to do the work. They did. Now, this, now, now this is a mind blower. They appeared to many, the Bible says. So somebody must have recognized somebody. I wonder <laughs> who were some of those who were raised. Because for 40 days, man, somebody must have, boy, you, boy, you look like Abraham, you, man. you talk like Abraham. <laughs> Abraham talks, so. You look like, you, talk, you sound like, you, you sing like, only some, you, you, you're quoting the same text that it, somebody had to recognize, isn't it, right? Stay tuned. So we're going to find out who exactly those people were and what did they do. And how does that reflect? Because they themselves were a type of the first fruits. Friend, this is serious, friends. And friends, you know, the sad thing is God expects us to go and teach this to others. Sweet promises given to all who believe. Behold, I come, my own to receive. 
hold fast till I come. The danger is great, not as do others. Be watchful and wait. Hold Sweet promise of the kingdom restored to you shall be given. Come enter my sit down on my throne. Bright crowns are in waiting. Hold fast till I come. We'll watch until with lamps burning bright the thief in the night we know he is but know not the day as spring showers that summer is not far away hold fast till i come Sweet promise of the kingdom restored to you shall be given. Come enter my sit down on my throne. Bright crowns are in waiting. Hold fast 